Nestled in the skyline of downtown Minneapolis, the Fauché Tower is a monument to Art Deco architecture. When it opened nine decades ago, it changed the face of Minneapolis. It is now a lasting testament to the ambition of the man who built it, Wilbur Fauché. It's sort of a symbol of conspicuous consumption. We're in the roaring 20s, right? Uh, you have a lot of folks that are really kind of living the high life, and uh, Fauché was one of those. You know, and uh, he built this wonderful building. And so it's, it's kind of that symbol of, of that time period as well. Once I built a tower, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Fauché moved to Minneapolis from the East Coast in 1915, $150,000 in debt. But within 10 years, his fortunes turned around in the city of Lakes. And soon the W.B. Fauché Company had utilities in 23 states and five foreign countries. And he wanted a place to house his growing empire. He wanted to show that, that he had arrived too. He went from sort of a rags to riches, you know, and then back again, you know, in the end, you know. But he, it was his way of kind of showing that he arrived. Fauché idolized George Washington, so he decided to build a tribute to him in Minneapolis in the shape of the Washington Monument. The 32-story tower would not only be the tallest building in the city, it would be the tallest building between Chicago and the West Coast, and the first to be built with all union labor. <laughs> dedication over Labor Day weekend in 1929 made international news, with 25,000 people turning out for the three-day celebration. Stars and Stripes Forever composer John Philip Sousa and his 75-piece band were even on hand to perform a march he wrote in honor of the city's first skyscraper. A lot of Italian marble, French marble, um, gold plating, uh, African mahogany, um, all kinds of wood, uh, you know, oak and, and teak wood. It was really impressive, you know, and, and he, he had the crest of, of the Fauché family, you know, in different, different spots around, around the building because he was, he was letting folks know, hey, this is, this is mine, I did this. But less than two months later, Fauché's empire came tumbling to the ground with the stock market crash that started the Great Depression. He lost everything and couldn't afford to pay the people who built his life's dream. At the dedication, he gives Sousa a check for $20,000. Uh, Sousa gives him, you know, the, the march that he wrote, you know, a signed copy of the march that he wrote. Um, but then the check bounces. And so, again, as the story goes, uh, Sousa refused to allow Fauché to play the march until he was paid. And uh, my understanding is that the family, the Sousa family, was not paid until after Sousa had passed. Not only was the tower auctioned off, Fauché and his right-hand man at the company, Henry Henley, were convicted of mail fraud and sentenced to 15 years at Leavenworth Prison. But they only served three because President Roosevelt commuted their sentences, and President Truman pardoned both men, officially clearing their names. After getting out of prison, Fauché lived in Colorado and Arizona, but he eventually moved back to Minneapolis without a penny to his name, where he passed away in the shadow of the local landmark that bears his name. He lived until his mid-70s. He ends up dying in a convalescent home, and uh, I, ironically, he dies on August 30th, 1957, you know, the 28th anniversary to the day of the dedication of this, this wonderful building. Since 2008, the Fauché Tower has been the W Minneapolis, a 229-room luxury hotel. But some of Fauché's over-the-top touches, like the original elevator doors, floor, and ceiling in the lobby, remain untouched by the hands of time. Prohibition Sky Bar now sits on the 27th floor where Fauché's office used to be, complete with the original woodwork and a special staircase to an unfulfilled dream. He had built the office suite for his office, um, but he also had plans to build a residence on the floor above, and so a stairway was created, um, but the residence were never actually built, and so we have the stairway to nowhere that's part of the Prohibition Lounge. On the 30th floor, a museum features a collection of pieces from the past about Wilbur Fauché and his folly. While the observation deck continues to be a popular place for the public, you get a 360-degree bird's-eye view of the city. 
even though the Fauché Tower surrendered its status as the tallest building in Minneapolis in the 70s, its remarkable history puts it head and shoulders above the rest. There was a time where you kind of wondered if this building would last. So the fact that it's still standing here is wonderful, is great. It's a great piece of uh, Minneapolis' history. It's a great piece of Minnesota history.